Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing a uh, another concealed carry uh, training class, uh, primarily intended for my new concealed carriers in states like New York, New Jersey, Maryland, California, Illinois, and Hawaii, because the Supreme Court recently, recently said that you guys are Americans too, you're not second class citizens, you get to carry guns like the rest of us, okay? So, um, you know, we got a lot of people in those states that are going to be getting the carry permits um, and they are at the disadvantage that they're not just able to go to their local gun range and pick up information because even the instructors at at their local gun ranges let's say like new york and new jersey and california in many cases they have not been carrying guns right you know especially if you're like in new york and new jersey you haven't they those the instructors in those states have not been carrying guns so it's very hard for them uh, to give you uh, specific gun carrying advice. So it's really useful, I think, for you guys in those states to reach out outside of your state uh, to people and instructors that have been carrying and get information and tips uh, from them. Okay, so um, now I'm going to say this with, uh, with carrying an extra magazine. Uh, for many years, I did not carry an extra magazine. And the reason is because the, the magazine holders right regardless of the size of the magazine the magazine holders themselves were big and thick okay um so i didn't like carrying this uh i started carrying a magazine when i uh, found these magazine holders from safari land okay and these are cheap they're like 12 dollars on amazon they'll ship it right to your house it's a collapsible uh magazine holder um and the great thing about this is that uh, it it really uh will fit almost all magazines so here i have a thin glock 43 magazine you can see how it fits that we'll hold it in place right even if i let me put a um a load right so this one's a loaded magazine right so even if i put a loaded magazine in there which is heavier right it's not going to just easily fall out right but it it's still you know you can grip it and pull it out now, it's not going to be as quick and as fast as this, all right? So for drilling, for training, for everyday shooting, sure, I strap this on because this is a lot faster faster to do, you know, hundreds of repetitions with, right? Uh, but for everyday carry, this is too big and thick. So I don't carry this. I carry this, all right? So as you can see, it will fit the a small Glock 43 magazine. All right, which you guys are, you know, for, for everyday carry, right, contrary to what people think, you're not going to take the biggest gun. And this is one of the things that I find from people in those in those states, like New York, New Jersey, California, Maryland, Illinois, Hawaii, who are going to be carrying guns for the first time. They have it in their head that they're going to carry the biggest cannon that they can possibly can. That's not comfortable, right? You're going to do it for a week, and then you're going to stop doing it, right? If you ask people that have that carry every day for years, you will find that they carry the smallest gun that they can possibly carry. The purpose of this gun, right, is to get me to my AR-15, right? This gun gets you to the big guns, okay? That's the purpose of this. This gets you, you know, this is an oh shit gun, right? Um, so, now, um, question becomes, first of all, let me continue what I was saying. So, as you can see, this, this fits the Glock 43 mag. Um, it will also fit, let's say, Glock 26 mag, all right? There's a little bit of stretching that goes on, right? It stretches just a little bit, but not too much, all right? It will also, it will also hold a, a Glock 17 mag, all right? It'll come around, you got to push in a little bit more, all right? It will also hold the Glock 17 mag. Now, if you're carrying this with a Glock 17 mag or double stack mag, the, the leather is going to stretch a little bit. So what I advise is... Um, if you if you're going to be carrying this with a larger magazine, don't go back and try to put a smaller magazine in there because it may because this is going to stretch a little bit. So what I do is like the this this magazine holder that I have here, okay, uh, I I have that marked specifically for my Glock 43 Max, right? You you can take a white uh, marker or gray uh, sharpie and you can write you know like Glock 43 or Glock 26 or Glock 17 on this. So only those magazines will go into it, and over time, this will become almost like form-fitted to the magazine, right? So this one over here I got so I can carry a Glock 26 magazine over here, which is obviously going to stretch it just a little bit more than the Glock 43, all right? So this is going to be for a Glock 26 
only, okay? Like I said, these are cheap, they're $12, so you can get lots of them, right? You can get, you know, you can get a whole bunch of them. Um, and um, and the nice thing about this, it actually has, is it has one strap here to hold the magazine in place. Like that, right? And then it has another strap that actually can go around your belt. So I can remove this from my belt without taking the belt off, right? Although normally I, I take the belt off because I don't like, you know, it's, I, I just find that fast to do it. But you can remove this. Um, you can remove this without taking your belt off, which is convenient if you want to say want to give this to somebody. Or let's say uh, you're going someplace where you need to disarm, right? Let's say if you're going to go into a federal building and you're going to have to leave your equipment in your, uh, in your car. You, know, you can quickly take this off, right, without having to take your belt off in your car, okay? So, and the other thing is, that since we're talking about this army, uh, if you're carrying a loaded gun, right, you take, the, the, the holster is the safety mechanism of the gun, okay? The gun does not come out of the holster. If I need to go into, like, a, a, a courthouse or something, the, the whole gun with the holster comes off my belt, and this gets locked in my car. Right? I don't I don't unload the gun. I don't take out the magazines like this. It gets locked in my car. When I come back, the whole thing goes back on my belt. Right? If I, I use the bathroom, it goes into my pocket like that. Right? Um, so so we don't take the gun out of the holster uh, and try to get the round out of chamber because that's not something that you normally do in your car. So the, that increases the chance of you making an of, 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 of making a mistake, okay? So the safest thing for you to do is leave the gun in the holster, right? The, the holster is going to be a hard Kydex holster like this that protects the trigger guard, okay? Keep retains the gun. This stays in the holster, right? That's the safety mechanism, right? So um so as you can see this comes off pretty easy. Same thing with this. If I needed to get this off, I would just pull that strap off. This quickly comes off my belt. I don't need to remove my belt. So this is an excellent uh, magazine for everyday carry. And um, as you can see here, it sits horizontally on the belt. And I can slide it a little bit, right? So if I go to sit down in the car seat, if I need to, I can move and slide this this way a little bit, right? Um, or, if I'm, or if I need to do something else, I can slide it the other way. Uh, so it's really comfortable and practical. For everyday carry so this is from safari land okay it's 12 dollars on amazon I, I don't get like a kickback or anything just throwing it out there for you guys you know because i think it's just it's just extremely practical for everyday carry and it's also easy enough to actually work with where you can actually do drills right and, and, and get it back in there you know so it's, so it's easy enough to actually to, to work with um for everyday carry i do not like um I do not like to carry a magazine holder that sits that sits vertical like this because what I find is it's first of all it sticks out a lot it'll stick up uh, if you carry it inside of your waistband it, it, it it's uncomfortable so I, I don't like these for everyday carry I do like them for drilling and doing high repetition exercises but not for everyday carry I like this it sits horizontal it's out of my way and the honest truth is, like if I'm driving the car, if I'm doing other things, I don't even, I, I, you know, I don't think about the magazine holder. I don't think about the gun because they're both thin enough and small enough that they're just out of my way. And until I actually decide, you know, that I want to think about my gun, that's the only time that I'm even aware that I'm that I have a gun. I mean, and one of the things I advise people, if you're new to concealed carry, um, make sure you home carry for about two weeks before you even consider carrying a gun outside of your house right because you got to work out all the bugs how you're going to carry it how you're going to use the bathroom how's it going to you know comfortably sit on your body um you don't want to go out for you know you don't want to strap on a gun for the first time and go out and then all of a sudden like you're constantly like fidgeting and moving stuff you know you know it, because you're going to be aware you're going to be constantly thinking oh shit i got a gun on me but you know home carry for about two weeks get comfortable doing other stuff around your house without even thinking about your gun or your magazine. And then after two weeks, then you can start, you know, once you get your carry permit, if you need one in your state, go out and you can start carrying the gun. And it's going to be like, you're not even thinking about the gun at that point. You're just going about doing your business. And it's it's there just like, you know, like I got like, I don't know, I got a pocket knife here. I don't think about that. I got a flashlight here, okay? I don't think, oh shit, I got a flashlight on me. I got a flashlight on me. That's not something I consider or I think about. It's just there. If I need to use, if I need to use it for any reason, I know where it is. I just go to it, you know. But other than that, I'm not thinking about it. So you want to be that comfortable with your gun 
um, and your um, and your extra magazine. Now, really quick, let's talk about why we carry an extra magazine. All right. Uh, now, one of the biggest myths, misconceptions, BS out there is that uh, you, you know if you ever get into a gunfight, you're never going to need more than three or four rounds. Right? Complete BS. Okay. Uh, first of all, those statistics are very skewed. Okay. Uh, they, those statistics have been developed by people that are very anti-gun um, and what they'll do is they'll average in, for example, situations where, uh, for example, there, um, uh, a person just presented a firearm and that was enough to, you know, so, so now they're averaging in zeros, right? Zero shots, zero shots fired, right? Or they'll, uh, they'll even uh, average, from what I've heard, they'll even average like uh, accidental discharges in the locker rooms of police stations, which from the rumors I hear, uh, at, at least in the past, was really common, right? Uh, police officers accidentally discharging their firearm in the locker room, okay? Uh, so that's, again, that's one shot fired, right? Uh, so they're gonna, they, they throw in all these things to skew the statistics, okay? So, so don't believe any of that. Um, there's, you know, look at individual cases. There's plenty of individual self-defense cases out there where people fired 10 rounds or 12 rounds or, you know, um, so and now the other thing to understand with a, um, a self-defense type of situation, it is a highly unusual and unlikely event to happen. Okay. Even, even, uh, police officers, for example, that answer dangerous calls, you know, they might go through their whole career without, without ever firing a gun. Okay. So it is a highly unusual event. And w when it does happen, you have no idea how it's going to play out. Right? You have no idea if you're going to need one round or if you're going to have to go through two magazines. You've got no idea, all right. And you don't, have, and you have no idea if you're going to even be able, if you're going to be able to hit the target with the first shot, or if your target's going to, you know, if your threat's going to stop with the first shot. It's nothing like shooting on a gun range, which is a controlled environment. I mean, there are days where at 50 at 50 yards, I can hit those those 20 inch targets. At 50 yards, 10 out of 10 times, right? Without missing, okay? That doesn't mean that in a self-defense type of situation, I'm going to be anywhere near that good because, because first of all, there's other distractions, right? First of all, you're in, a, you know, if I decide I'm going to start shooting at that target over there, I'm aware that I'm going to be shooting at that target. I've made that conscious decision. In, in the self-defense type of situation, uh, the typical position that you're going to be in is you're not even going to be sure uh, at what point do you need to use deadly force? At what point do you need to use deadly force? Or what's actually, you know, what it is happening? You're going to be, you're not, there might be some second guessing. So that's one of the things that might throw off your concentration. Just trying to make that decision of, is this as dangerous as I'm perceiving that this situation is developing, okay? Uh, the other thing is you might have your, your children with you, right? And you're thinking about getting your children out of the way, right? You, may, you know, a self-defense situation may not be that, right? A self-defense situation, uh, maybe get back, get back, get back, right? It might be that, okay? Uh, so you have no idea how a self-defense type of situation is gonna be, if you're even gonna be able to get two hands on the gun, all right? So, uh, so, that's the, so that's the one thing. You have no idea how many rounds you're gonna need. Uh, more rounds is better. Now, uh, you know, you might say, okay, so I'm carrying a Glock 43 here, six round magazine, one chamber, total seven rounds. Wouldn't it be better, for example, to just carry, let's say, a Glock 19? I carry with 15 rounds, right? Well, what I have found is that, you know what, Glock 19 is a lot thicker. I've tried carrying it. I, you know what, I just end up not carrying it. I always go back to the smaller gun. Um, so I have found that it is a lot more comfortable and practical for me to carry a thinner Glock 43 on this side and the extra extra magazine over here, right? I have found that to be a lot more comfortable. Uh, in fact, even switching up to a Glock 43X, right? Which sticks out about a half inch longer. When I sit down in the car seat, that's, that's not as comfortable as a Glock 43. So again, I don't expect to get into a gunfight at any point in my life. Um, so for, for an event that is uh, such a low probability of ever happening, you know, you, you're going to want to be as comfortable as possible on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So, so, so the, the, in reality, you're going to carry the smallest, lightest gun that you can possibly carry so that when you're doing the things that you normally do, 
the guns just you're not even aware that the gun is on your body okay that's 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 the perfect everyday carry setup where you, where you strap on your gun and you're not even feeling that you're carrying a gun right and that's my situation right now but between the glock 43 here and the extra six round magazine over here you know until i make a conscious effort to think about the gun i'm not thinking about the gun right that is the perfect carry situation uh, that you want to be in. Just like I don't think about my light or my knife here. I mean, I just don't think about it until I need to use my knife or my light, okay? Uh, so, the, so, so, two reasons why you want to carry the extra magazine. One, you have no idea what a self-defense situation is, is going to, you know, is going to turn out to be and how many rounds you would actually need to use, okay? Uh, don't go by other people's statistics because your situation is not going to be a typical statistic, okay? Uh, it is probably going to be atypical, okay? It's, it's such a low probability event that when it does happen, it usually doesn't follow any specific pattern, okay? Um, but the second reason, right, and this is a really important reason, the second reason why you want to carry a magazine uh, is because if your gun jams, uh, okay, if your gun jams, Right. The, the first thing you want to try, right, if, 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 if the gun is still closed and it looks like you had a misfire, you're going to do the tap rack, all right, and then attempt to fire again, okay? Um, but if the gun looks like it's jammed in any way, locked open, double feeds, you know, stove pipe, whatever, um, or stove pipe, you can try ripping it out, racking it, and seeing if it closes. Uh, but if, if the jam looks any more complicated than that, you don't want to sit there and try to go through a whole diagnostic tree, right? The, 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 the fastest, easiest solution that is going to solve most of your jamming problems, or almost all your jamming problems, is rip out the magazine, you know, clear, clear the slide, get everything out there, get the next magazine in there, and then rack the slide, okay? So we use the extra magazine uh, to, to fix the broken gun, and I am borrowing that frame, uh, that phrase from the... Um, uh, from James Yeager, who recently passed away, a uh, legendary um, gun instructor in the gun in the gun community. Um, you know, he had many good things to say about you know, and, and a lot of good advice. And this is one of the things that I picked up from him a very long time ago. Um, as far as a, 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 I was always aware of the first reason to carry that extra magazine because you have no idea what a gunfight is actually going to turn out to be like. Uh, but he made me aware of the second reason, uh, which is that it is probably the best way to fix your broken gun. You know, if the gun is not working, it's, it's, it's a good chance that it is magazine related or, or, or ammunition related. Get that, get that magazine out of there, clear the gun, get another magazine in there, and now you know you, you've got a working gun, okay? So that's the second reason why we carry that second magazine. Uh, and, and, and for that reason, it makes a lot more sense to have two six-round magazines than just one big 17-round magazine. Because if this turns out to be faulty, if this is all I got, I don't have, you know, all I have now is one dead magazine, right? Um, versus if I got two magazines, even if they have half the round count, you know, if one fails, at least I have the other magazine, okay? Um, so that's the second reason why we carry that that second magazine. So I hope this uh, video was uh, was useful to you guys. Now, I'm going to say this. Uh, I live in a very low crime area. There is almost a zero, like a point zero 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 one percent chance that I would ever likely need to use a gun for self-defense, okay? The main reason why I carry a pistol, right, and an extra magazine uh, is not so much because I, I, I suspect that I would need to defend my life on a day-to-day -day basis. The main reason why I carry a gun is to assert my right to carry a gun. Because if you don't assert your rights, somebody's going to take it away from you. Okay, So if you're in one of these states like New York, New Jersey, Maryland, California, Illinois, Hawaii, okay, put in that application and go get that carry permit. And if they deny you for any reason, fight it. Okay? Don't let them get away with taking away your rights. Okay? Now, the other thing I'm going to say is um, uh, before you start carrying a gun, especially in those states, make sure you get yourself a prepaid legal service okay? uh, so that if you ever do get yourself into a self-defense situation, or not even that, even if you just get into yourself into a situation where you bend over and your gun becomes exposed and some, some wacky 
Democrat sees it in the supermarket and she's gonna say, oh, I saw his magazine. He, you know, he, he was threatening me with it, right? You know, they're gonna tell you that because they saw your magazine, where is it? because they saw your magazine sticking out of your back over here, they're gonna tell you that, that, that this was threatening them, okay? Um, they're gonna try it, right? And uh, the police in those cities, right, particularly in those states, they work for anti-gun uh, politicians. And their orders are to go out and politically prosecute, you know, persecute, right? They're out there, their orders to go out there and basically give you a hard time, okay? So if some crazy lady got, or man, whatever, says that your magazine or your gun became exposed and they're going to try and make a big deal out of that and, and say that you were threatening them with the mere fact that your gun became exposed, okay? You don't want to sit there and try to argue with the cop or with the lady, okay? You want to be able to get on the phone, get your lawyer on the phone, right? A prepaid lawyer to do the talking for you because you think that you're just going to give away a simple, easy, reasonable explanation. You're bending over to pick something up and that they're going to accept it. That's not the case because their jo the job of the police in those uh, Democrat-run cities is to target you. You are a political enemy in those cities, right? New York City, you know, cities throughout Jersey, California. You're a political enemy. So you, they're targeting you. So if you say the wrong thing, if you make a mistake, right? If, and they're going to they say things to try to intentionally get you to make a mistake. You know, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself arrested and going through the legal system. And the whole point of that is to basically charge, convict you of something to make you lose your carry permit, okay? So the, the way you deal with that, okay, is you have yourself a prepaid legal service. The one that I use is US Law Shield. There's others out there, all right? I'm not saying that this is the only one. There's others out there. The reason why I'm recommending this one is because I, I, uh, I use them, I have good experience with them, and I also have a coupon code for use. The coupon code is Pocono Shooting. There's their website, there's their phone number. Uh, but I think you gotta register through the website in order to, uh, uh, to use that coupon code. I, I, you get some type of a discount and it, it changes from time. I don't know what it is. It might be a free month or whatever. But you get some type of a discount. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like 30 or $40 up front. And then they charge you somewhere between like, I think maybe $10, $15 a month. Uh, I think it's like $20 if you put your wife on. Um, I've been a member for a really long time. So I don't remember exactly the details. It just, you know, it gets charged automatically um, to my card. Um, so I have a prepaid legal service here. So if I ever do get uh, into any gun related question with a police officer, right? Um, I don't sit there and try to explain myself, right? What I do is I say, one second, I need to call my attorney and he's going to explain to you the situation. Okay. Um, so I call up my attorney, right? I have the emergency number and I let them do the talking. Okay. So that's how I use this prepaid legal service. Uh, the other way I use it, if I have a gun related question, like for example, I have here this Palmer 80 that I built myself. Is it legal for me to carry in my state? All right. I, I kind of knew the answer was yes, but I wanted it in writing from a lawyer, which they did, right? They gave me the answer in writing through an email and I have it in writing. Now, what if I'm traveling to Florida? Can I bring this gun to Florida with me? And I don't know the answer offhand. I'd have to send them an email, right? If I'm going to some other state, let's say I'm going to Texas. Can I bring this gun over there and carry it, right? Does my state have reciprocity with them? What states along the way can I carry my gun through? In what states would I have to unload it? In which states would I have to avoid altogether? They will give me an a travel itinerary, okay? Uh, the other thing, you know, so, so, the, so, so I will ask them gun-related questions and I will ask them travel-related questions, okay? So it's not just a question of if you get into some type of trouble or if, if, the, if a legal issue comes up that you use these guys, you can use them on a regular basis just for, you know, you know, you know, is this gun legal for me to own in this state? Um, you know, can I get, can I buy a suppressor? Uh, you you know, all, all these questions that might come up, you know, is it legal for me to have, you know, a, a 10 inch AR in my state? You know, you know, all these questions that you might have, you, 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 you would email these lawyers and they give you the answer in writing that you can also refer back to in the future. Okay, so uh, again, that's U.S. Law Shield. Okay, and it says right there it's only 10.95 a month, starting at 10.95 a month. It's probably going to cost you closer to 15 because you're probably going to want to add your wife or something. And the promo code is Pocono Shooting. Website is uslawshield.com. 
Right, so again, thank you for watching. Um, if you got any questions, put them below. Uh, if you think anybody else would benefit from this video, please share the video. You know, you can copy, copy and paste the link and send it out to people. Um, because what we want to do at this point is we want to try and get as many people carrying as possible, getting carry permits in states like New York, New Jersey, Maryland, California, Illinois, Hawaii. Um, because the more people carry, the more common it, it becomes, the more this right will become ingrained in our culture. Okay. So again, thanks again for watching. We'll talk soon.